Hello everyone, welcome to the Target Jobs BDO webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about why I chose BDO. I'm going to be your host today. I'm Jackie. I'm one of the senior editors at Target Jobs. And I've got a lovely panel here of BDOers. Um, I'm going to introduce them in, in a second or get them to introduce themselves. Then we'll have a chat for approximately 20, 25 minutes. Um, then we'll have 10 minutes about BDO, the opportunities um, there, the programs available, et cetera, and some application tips. And then we can answer any of your questions. You can just post them in the chat. Okay, so if we just get started, I'll introduce um, everyone in the order they're on my screens, screen. So uh, we're going to start with Julia. Hello, everybody. Wasn't sure whether to say good morning or good afternoon, but definitely good afternoon. Um, my name is Julia McCullough. I am an international tax partner at BDO. Um, I have been in the accountancy profession for um, well over 25 years now. Um, when I graduated, um, I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. So I decided that an accountancy qualification would be a great way to spend a few years um, improving my knowledge, learning a bit more about the world of business and making up my mind what I did want to do. Um, I joined into a tax team immediately and have to say I really fell on my feet. Um, I really enjoy working with um, international businesses, which doing international tax I do, and I really enjoy the constant changing of tax rules, um, which is something that keeps my job constantly interesting. Um, straight out of university, I joined PricewaterhouseCoopers, so I trained with them and I spent um, probably about 15, 20 years with them. Um, I very much enjoyed my time there. I was working with some very large corporations, um, about partway through that stage of my career, I thought it would be good to go and see what it'd be like working for in industry. So I went and worked as a um, European head of tax at Foster's Australian Brewing Group, where I was selling beer and wine. And then at Kimberly Clark, uh, where the product wasn't quite so glamorous, but very useful with toilet paper, tissues and nappies. Um, I came back to the profession again because I really enjoy helping clients achieve um, their objectives and I enjoy with new clients you constantly have new issues um, and I've now been with BDO for about two years having joined here from PwC and looking forward to telling you a bit about why I made my decision and how I'm finding my time here. Fantastic thank you Julia and Laura. Hello everybody um, as it says on the tin uh, my name is Laura Burton and I'm a tax director in our global employer services team um, and I actually special, specialize in expatriate taxation. Um, what does that mean? Well it's essentially helping international businesses um, that Julia just mentioned but very much from a um, employee tax point of view. So when businesses are looking to send their employees around the world there are tax implications that they need to be aware of um, and so we advise corporates on what they need to think about when moving people globally. Um, I joined BDO just over two months ago and prior to that was working with Deloitte for 16 years. Um, I actually did a geography degree so it wasn't anything to do with tax at all um, but when I was looking into uh, graduate jobs working in an international tax role um, was very interesting to me because I get to speak with people around the world on a daily basis. Um, so yeah that's a little bit about me. Thank you, welcome Laura. David? Afternoon, everybody. So um, I'm David Campbell. I'm an audit partner, so not in tax, um, based in London. Um, I joined BDO straight from university about 25 years ago. So I've been at BDO for a, a bit longer than the others. Um, made partner after 10 years. I specialize in restaurants and bars, uh, le leisure type clients. So I work with Gordon Ramsay and lots of Michelin starred uh, restaurant groups that expand over the world. Um, I actually left BDO in 2015, I uh, went to KPMG for a few years and um, see what it was like uh, on the other side, but then I decided to come back. So in last year I rejoined BDO um, and uh, I'm really pleased with that decision. Thank you David. And finally Shane, who I've just lost actually. Are you there Shane? Oh dear. Okay. Connectivity issues. She's dropping in and out. Uh, I know. Hi. Can you hear me? No. No. Can, I, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Let's see how long this lasts. <laughs> um, hi everyone. I'm Shanae. I am originally from South Africa. I'm assistant 
audit manager at the era now. So I originally left school, not really knowing what I wanted to study, um, convinced that I was going to be a doctor. And one morning I woke up and decided, actually, I'm going to be an accountant. So here I am. I studied accounting for four years, did my honors in accounting, wrote my board exams in South Africa, did three years of articles with Deloitte. And this is my fourth year in audits. Um, and I've done a year now with BDO. I definitely think that I've picked the right career choice, although it came to me overnight. I definitely think I have made the right decision and I'm happy to be where I am. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Welcome, Shanae, and sorry for calling you Shane. No problem at all. <laughs> Great. So the first question we have is, what made you decide to apply to BDO in the and David, I suppose, what made you apply twice? Um, so I think like a lot of people, when I got to the end of my time at university and I did chemistry, I had no um, you know, business finance um, background at all. But I, I knew that I didn't want to do academic science. I wanted to do something in business, didn't know what. Uh, and I think for a lot of people, the, the accounting training gives you the opportunity to get a uh, exposure to lots of different types of businesses um, so you do a three-year training contract and in that time you know you'll spend time with a, a shipping client and a, and a restaurant and a retailer and a mining company and it and it gives you an opportunity to see how these businesses tick how they make their money what drives them um, so that was really my thinking at the time um, and the reason I chose BDO was to try and get as much variety as possible in that in those three years um, I did apply to the rest of the big four and, and got offers, but I, I was concerned that I would just get put on one huge client for a year and just be working on very small parts of it. Uh, and I wanted to get exposure to uh, more clients, different range of things, and to be working with the people who actually make a difference in those businesses rather than you know, the very bottom of HSBC somewhere. So that was what it was about for me, really. It was about a variety of clients um, and being able to get on quickly with the people who who make decisions in those businesses. Right, so variety key here. Yeah, because I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't have a clear idea that I wanted to specialize in X or Y. So I wanted to get as much breadth of exposure and just find out as much as I could about different businesses. And at the same time, you know, get the qualification because the ACA qualification is still really well respected. And whatever you choose to do in the rest of your career, it's a really good starting point for all sorts of jobs in business and finance and even if you go on to run your own business yeah you, you need to know how the numbers work and how you make your money and how to make the right decisions around money and finance right and okay julia yeah i've already mentioned a couple of my career decisions i've gone along but the reasons why i um, then applied to bdo um, you know, I'd worked in house, I'd worked for some very large corporations and I'd worked for PwC, which was the largest accountancy firm. And um, I was really looking for something that contrasted to that. Um, and what attracted me to BDO was that I knew it was the number five player and I knew how much it was growing. So for my career, I thought, well, if I want an opportunity, then actually, if I'm part of a growth organization, then I'll be able to grow my business with its business. Um, and that made a lot of sense for me. So that was my first reason. Um, the second reason was um, I wanted a slightly smaller organization because I wanted to have more of an impact. So um, the team that I was in previously, there were probably about three or 400 people in that team and a considerable number of partners. So actually making your voice heard and feeling that you had an influence, um, that could be challenging. Um, what I feel at BDO is I am in a team, I'm one of 13 partners. So I really feel I'm probably a team of about 80, 90. So I really feel that my voice matters and I can have a real impact on um, the careers and professional lives of those individuals who work for us. And the third reason for me with BDO, um, which I think is um, very unique actually, when you talk to people about their experience with BDO, um, you tend to get a really positive response. So I'd spoken to colleagues, but also even friends and family. And every time I spoke to people, they said, yeah, actually we've worked with them or we know them and actually they're really good people and they're good to work with and we've enjoyed our time with them. So that, that strength the brand in the market and I have to say it's really turned out to be true here. Um, but it was that that strength the brand and I thought, yeah, that sounds like an organization I'd like to be part of. 
We always um, advise students that they speak to, to people working at the company they're interested in and just get an idea of what people say about it. Or even just, as you say, in the marketplace, people who have worked with that company. That's, yeah, that's, that's true. Laura? Um, yeah, so I think uh, Julia and David, between them, have probably covered all the uh, reasons that I wanted to um, come across to BDO as well. Um, but for my own specific um, experience, I had a couple of um, ex-Deloitte colleagues who'd already moved, made the move across to BDO um, a few years ago and had stayed in touch with them and was always just hearing really great things about their experience. Um, and they've been, you know, very openly um, cheerleading for BDO for years and saying, you know, when are you going to come across and join us too? We think you'd really like it. Um, and actually, when I started to talk to them more and um, looking at the, the types of clients that they're working with, um, it's similar to, to what David was saying, actually, that um, because we very much thrive in the mid-market space from a, an expatriate global mobility standpoint, um, we are very well positioned to serve those clients. Um, and what I really like about working with clients in the mid-market is that you do feel like you are part of the team there, which I think is what David mentioned as well, um, and that you really do feel part of that organization. You feel like you're really making a difference, really helping them um, rather than just feeding into, you know, a more established um, business that has a global mobility function internally, which are just really going out to tender for mm -hmm. specific parts of the global mobility process. Um, so, yeah, I, for me, working at BDO is fantastic just because of the, the types of clients that I get to work with on a daily basis. Really enjoy that. Right, thank you. And Shade? Um, So, I didn't particularly actually choose BDO. I'd heard about BDO, but I didn't know much about it. I hadn't heard a lot about it. And I was at the time working for Deloitte and I was very happy there. I had no reason really to leave. I had a um, recruiting agency approach me and give me a bit more information about BDO. And I was hesitant because we like we tend to stick to something that we're familiar with. Um, and the lady, she convinced me, she's like, just give it a try, just have a chat to people from BDO, see how it is and see how you find it. So I decided to go ahead with the process. And I can tell you within five minutes of my interview, I had changed my mind and I decided that BDO was the place for the next part of my journey. Um, the culture, the atmosphere, the people that I spoke to, I spoke to two people at BDO, two partners, and absolutely loved that hour interview. Um, it was really great. And I knew, like it's been mentioned before, that BDO is growing, that there is room for opportunity. And at this point in my career, that's what I want to do. I want to push on the growth. I want to learn as much as I can. I want to be as, in, as involved as I can. So I knew that this was probably the perfect place for me for the next few years of my my journey and possibly more. So let's talk a bit about um, sort of opportunities and, and advantages of, of BDO because I guess there may be some people who'd say, oh, well, why not apply to a big four and go to a big four instead? Um, so now that you all, we've, we've heard your reasons for wanting to apply to, to BDO, but now that you're all here and working for BDO, what would you say the advantages are of it? You can jump in or I can pick someone if you want. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'll have a go. I mean, one of the things that I really enjoyed was um, building a sector specialization. So um, I started doing restaurant businesses and I was allowed to just have that autonomy to decide what sort of clients I want to work with and go for it. And I'm not sure I would have always been given that freedom in a, in a larger organization. And I really enjoyed that journey of uh, meeting with entrepreneurs, people who were setting up their very first restaurants um, and being with them as they rolled out and opened more and more and then sold them and then opened a new thing. Um, and groups that have now got hundreds of restaurants in the UK from the very beginning. And it was being involved in that journey with them, as Laura was saying. So yeah, you'd have a meeting with them and, and maybe go for a drink and be having a chat with them over a pint about their plans and their lives and, the, and who they were as people and what they wanted to achieve. And that was the bit I wasn't sure I would get. I mean, if you were doing the audit of British Telecom or HSBC at, at PwC, I don't think you get the same interaction with the with the entrepreneurs, with the founders, with the people who are really building these businesses. Um, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, and becoming an expert, being allowed to have the choice and the flexibility to focus on one particular sector. Um, so you really know what you're on about and you can make a difference when you're talking to those clients. 
So do you think at, at other companies you might just work with much bigger established companies where BDO you can actually get people starting out? Yeah, and I think BDO is, is, is big enough to afford you all the opportunities that you, you want and need. If you want to work on big international listed clients, you can do that. If you want to travel, you know, I've done some comments to Australia, I've traveled to loads of countries over the world, you'll get those opportunities. But it's small enough and flexible enough that if you want to do something different that doesn't currently exist, you know, I think the firm's culture, it works with entrepreneurial businesses and it's quite entrepreneurial itself. They'll say, great, go for it. You know, what can we do to help? Whereas I think in larger, more formalized corporate structures, they just, it doesn't fit into their structure. They want you to, you know, work down the same channels they always do. And I've, I've really enjoyed that. And there's loads of examples of BDO who people have came up with a new idea um, mm -hmm. and have now set up their own business within BDO doing that new thing, whatever it might be, um, and made a big success of it. And I think to add to what David mentioned and to sort of branch away from the audit side as such is that there's also that opportunity to get involved in other areas of BDO. So, for example, I went and joined the tutoring side of BDO. So I get to deal with the new starters to help train them. So I did a few courses that got me to be an accredited tutor. Um, I've been involved in social committees and a whole lot of other things that are not audits in to enable me to grow and to learn and to develop new skills that I might not have come across as soon as I would have been audits. And I guess maybe I'd add to that just a couple of things. Um, I, I really agree about the sort of the flexibility and entrepreneurialship that um, we see within BDO. And um, a key part of our strategy um, and sort of our raison d'etre is that we help others succeed. And um, I, I would say that that is so much more than just a tagline. Um, it is absolutely a throughout our culture. And having been a relatively recent joiner, um, certainly in my first few months, what completely struck me was that everybody I went to see to introduce myself to, um, I wasn't having to sell myself. They were all saying, oh, it's great to have you on board. You know, how can we help you? You know, what are you interested in? Who can I introduce you to? And that that culture of, of helping each other succeed, our clients succeed, our people succeed, um, it's really, really strong and it does really make a difference. Mm -hmm. The other point that I pick up with that on David mentioned is on the big on the sort of the bigger versus the entrepreneurial clients. And again, I think the choice that we have here is fantastic. People will have heard from my background that um, I do a lot of work with big companies. And actually, that's one of the things that I've brought to BDO. There have been quite a lot of changes in the accountancy regulatory environment and actually um, people are keen to make sure that there are more than just four large accountancy advisors so that means a lot of the large international corporates they really want to work with more of um, with more firms than the four that they're familiar with and that's brought so many opportunities to us at um, bdo so you know i absolutely i'm still working with my core client base of large multinationals but I do that alongside some really great clients. So, um, you know, I've got a CEO at the moment. He set up his business in the UK. He wants to set up his first outpost in Portugal and I'm helping him do that. So I get a completely contrast and it really keeps me on my toes. Yeah, and, and I'd just chip in from my side of things as well that um, I actually, um, based in our Leeds office um, out in the regions. And um, what I'm really enjoying about BDO at the moment is because we are a, a, a smaller size office than um, what I've been used to in the past, is that I'm getting to know and work with people across um, the broader BDO um, offering. So um, historically, I may have worked with other service lines within tax, um, whereas at BDO, I'm working with advisory, um, with audit and everyone within tax as well. So I think for me, in terms of my own personal growth and understanding what businesses need, um, been able to look at it from many different angles across BDO rather than just being siphoned into tax. Um, that's been really interesting for me. That's fabulous. I, I think especially for fresh graduates, the idea that there's going to be a lot of variety, a lot of different size companies to work with and a lot of um, enthusiastic support and people wanting to see you succeed when you, when you start is, is really great. Well, so those 20 minutes have gone really quickly. <laughs> uh, we have had so many good questions come in. So I think what I'll do now is I'll let Vicky Ferris, um give us an, introduce, uh, an introduction to 
BDO and the programs available and a little bit about the application process and then we can work through the questions on the call. Take it away Vicky. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jackie. Um, so my name's Vicky Verdi and I have a slightly different role from our panellists. I work as a resourcing advisor here. Um, so I specialise in the recruitment for our early in career opportunities in East Anglia. So that's looking at our Ipswich and Norwich office, as well as the London tax group. So working quite closely with Julia and Laura's team in that sense. So prior to my career at BDO, I joined back in August. Um, and before that, I was recruiting for graduates at KPMG. Um, and have also worked for Dyson and Ampower, so a whole different range of industries that I've worked with previously. So just to kind of summarise and just to bring to life a little bit more in terms of the numbers here at BDO. So as mentioned, we're not as big as the big four. However, we do still have a very strong presence. So at BDO, we are part of a $10.3 billion organisation as of the financial year of 2019 and 2020, um, where in that particular year, we saw a year on year increase of 7.8%. As you can see on the map, um, the colours that are highlighted in the dark blue um, shows where we have a presence and where we have an office. So we operate in 167 countries um, with more than 16 um, thousand with more than 1,600 offices um, across that remit. So there's a few countries where we still need to have a presence, but you can see kind of, you know, in terms of how that map brings it to life, that we are a fairly large organisation. So what does that mean for those that are joining us in the UK office? So as mentioned, we're the fifth largest accountancy firm in the UK. We have 18 offices um, across the UK. Um, so Laura being based in our Leeds office, London, we have a big presence. Um, but, you know, we also do have roles available kind of outside of London, too. And we primarily work with what we call the alternative investment markets, so AIM listed clients, but we also have clients that range from private individuals um, or entrepreneurs such as, you know, who David works quite closely with. And we also have famous brands such as Manchester City um, and UNICEF in that sense as well. And I think for me, one of the key things that I really like to highlight in this slide is the importance of the quality of the work that we deliver to our clients. So our clients are at the forefront of everything that we do um, and what our clients have, you know, suggested is that 79% of our clients would recommend us. So it's really, really important, you know, that the work that we deliver is very, very key on quality um, and kind of, you know, building those relationships over time as well. So when looking at organisations, I appreciate a lot of you will be kind of weighing up your options. Why should I come to BDO? Why should I go to this particular organisation? And I suppose, you know, my recommendation as a recruitment advisor would be to really understand what that organisation stands for. So at BDO, how we summarise this is through our values. Our values act like the cultural glue of our firm and every single employee at BDO is guided by them. Um, and it's kind of the questions that we ask ourselves whenever we are doing any piece of work. So our core purpose, as Julia mentioned earlier, was helping people to succeed. So this is the foundation of why we do what we do as a firm and our values define on how we should behave towards, the, towards one another and also how we behave with our clients. So behaving in accordance with our values puts us in a strong position to, deliver, um, to successfully deliver upon our strategies um, and to achieve the firm's vision. Um, so by knowing our four values, I think you kind of know exactly what we expect from you, but also what you can expect from us. So regardless of whenever you've got an assessment centre or interview coming up, I'd really recommend to really make sure that you hone in on the values that each organisation, um, you know, kind of promotes. Um, and I think most importantly, to help you understand whether it is right to apply for that particular organisation. I think it's kind of asking yourselves how the values align to yourself, um, but also, you know, are these values that you'll be able to kind of bring across in your day to day role um, and kind of helping you motivate and keeping you, you know, getting out of bed in the morning to go to work. So I'm now just going to focus a little bit on our build strategy. Um, so this focuses on the fee, five core objectives um, here at BDO um, in order to achieve our vision as a firm. So in particular, I'm going to pay close attention to the you part of this, which is unifying culture. So there are a number of ways that we want to promote a unifying culture here at BDO. Um, and I think firstly, for me, what I've seen that's been apparent since I've joined in August is you are encouraged to be yourself. So we value every single individual and we really want all our individuals to realise their aspirations. 
So we know that when individuals bring their full self to work, you are far more likely to be successful and you have a voice and your opinions count. And I hope that you've been able to see this through the stories that you've heard from our panelists as well today. We inspire and challenge. Um, so, you know, we want to offer the same breadth and quality of work at all stages of your career. So our personal career plans are designed to inspire and challenge our workforce. And we expect you to shape your career according to your strengths, skills and personality. Um, and collaboration, we want to share and apply knowledge and ideas remain one of the most powerful things that we can do as an organisation. It helps us to remain competitive. So we expect everyone to play their part in terms of collaboration. And finally, success. So each of us have our own def definition of what success looks like. So we want to help ensure that our employees are able to define and achieve their own success. And in doing so, it will ultimately help contribute to the overall success of the firm. So that's kind of what we practice in terms of unifying culture. Within unifying culture as well, we have three strategic priorities that we're focusing on. So this is looking at well-being, um, be yourself, as I've just spoken about, and citizenship. So in terms of well-being, it's really, really important that you know at BDO we do promote a very strong work-life balance. Um, the importance of making sure that you are taking a break, um, because we know that we need to have a very you know healthy workforce. Um, as well as that, in the firm we have a number of mental health workers as well, um, mental health first aiders, sorry, um, who have been trained um, and a great support and we also have a number of resources available um, for individuals just to help them in terms of their well-being and just to draw upon citizenship as well um, so we do offer what we call five plus five um, so when you come to join the firm that you are offered the opportunity to go and do volunteering um, so you know this is helping you kind of hone if there's something in particular that you're passionate about um, or having the time to give back to your communities as well so there's a whole breadth of opportunities to kind of ensure um, that we are you know kind of to bring out a little bit more about our culture. So I'm now going to move on to our different streams that we have available at our um, at BDO um, and then I'll go on to talk a little bit more about our opportunities within each of those. So firstly, I'm going to focus on advisory. So as businesses grow, so do the challenges that they face. So our advisory services help our clients to meet these challenges at every stage of their life cycle. So such key events might include buying a new business um, or exiting one in order to extract the maximum value. So this is a pretty large part of BDO service lines. Next, we have our business services and outsourcing team. So these combine the use of technology and the expertise of our team and the wider ecosystem. So they provide outsourced accountancy and tax services together with proactive business and um, business advice for growing businesses that are looking to expand in the UK or internationally. So our business service and outsourcing team help international clients with a range of accounting requirements across different jurisdictions. So this is done by coordinating international networks and local expertise um, with this particular area of BDA. And then we have account um, and then we have auditing. Um, so this is the largest stream here at BDO um, and our auditing team work to provide an opinion. So BDO need to perform audit procedures, um, which will include the inquiry of management, inspection of books and records to ensure that there is sufficient evidence to support the opinions that are being issued. So on a yearly basis, organisations will release their financial statements. Our audit teams will be working very hard in the background to ensure that that is valid um, and true to purpose. So they're not necessarily making up the figures. And then lastly, um, we have tax. Um, so the areas that both Laura and Julia form part in. So these include day-to-day -day compliance with the tax authorities, advice on ta employment taxation and international tracts. So there's a number of transactional supports that we also have available, um, such as mergers and acquisitions, VAT services um, and tax advice and many more. Um, so what you'll find with most of our opportunities at BDO is that we will have the stream and within each stream, we kind of have a specialism with them. So I appreciate there is a lot um, of opportunities available at BDO and my best advice for you to be my best advice would be to really think about what each of those job descriptions are mapping out and really understand how your skill set aligns to it so we appreciate you might not necessarily have direct work experience but you may be able to demonstrate skills in a different way um, so it's really really important to look at the job description 
understand what that role's asking and if it excites you um, and if it's something that really does motivate you and truly bring out what you enjoy doing then we'd strongly recommend for you to um, apply for it so we have opened for our graduate programs um, so these are structured learning three year programs um, as well as you know working on the job you'll also be studying for your professional qualification and um, so the professional qualification will vary depending on the stream that you're going into so that will also be stated on the job description before you apply um, and as I've mentioned you know this route is available for finalist students all those that have recently graduated as well so all roles are currently open on our website. We don't necessarily have fixed closing dates, so we'd strongly encourage you to apply sooner rather than later. Um, and just, um, as, um, just as a signpost, these are our minimum requirements. So we look for a 2-2 in a degree. Um, we don't necessarily specify that you must have a degree in accounting and finance. Um, so, you know, we are open to all degree disciplines. Um, three A-levels are equivalent at A star to C. Um, and a nine to four in maths and English GCSE or equivalent as well. And for those that are not in their final year, um, we do offer um, work experience. Um, so for those that are completing their undergraduate degree, we have an industrial placement program where you can come and spend 12 months with us. Um, and we'd hope that 12 months is that you would enjoy your time at BDO um, and we enjoy what we see from you. Um, so we would then hope to make you an offer um, to join us as a trainee so you go into your final year without having to worry um, and we also do have summer internships so these are slightly shorter in time but these will be um, this would be six weeks and it would be a paid internship so this would typically take place um, at around mid-July until the end of August and um, so they're aimed at penultimate year students looking to secure a full-time role over a short period and again similar to the industrial placements if you enjoy your time and we like what we see we would then hope to make you an offer to come and join us as a trainee as well so I'm now going to focus on what our application process looks like and what this will entail so we have quite a short application process. Um, so this will be three steps. So the first step will be completing an online application form. Once you've completed that, you'll be invited straight away to what we call our HyperY um, online test. So this will combine online testing um, with a video interview. So what we want to do in this particular test is really immerse kind of giving you scenarios, asking you what you do, how that would make you feel, but also understanding a little bit more about why you're applying to BDO. So there's no real way that you can prepare for our online tests, unfortunately. Um, but what I'd recommend for you to do is just making sure that you do take the time um, to really understand what the questions are asking and don't rush to get it done. So you'll have around 45 minutes to complete that. If successful, um, we will then invite you through to an assessment centre. So this will all be done virtually and I'll go into a little bit more detail about what the assessment centre will entail. And then 48 hours following on from your assessment centre, um, we will let you know the outcome. Um, so hopefully it is quite a rapid process so you're not waiting around for too long. So as I've mentioned with the online tests, um, you know, there's there's no real way that you can prepare for it. Um, so we really want you to be your true genuine self. So we're not trying, we're not trying to catch you up. We just want to understand how it would make you feel. Um, so you will receive some hints and tips before you complete the test, and there will be some practice tests in there. So what would we recommend for you to do is just taking the time um, to do the practice tests, get a little bit familiar with the format and how it's all set out. But to just give you this give yourself the best chance to succeed is to sit in a quiet room where you won't be disturbed have everything you have everything you might need to hand so always important to have a big pen paper just in case you need to write down any notes and a calculator um, and as I've mentioned just practice 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 and get a bit familiar if you're unsure if you've got any questions following on from the online test um, or before you complete it just make sure you do get in contact with us here at the early in careers team we love to be mind readers but unfortunately we cannot determine what everyone's thinking so it's really important if you're unsure just don't be afraid to come and ask us and get clarity um, at that and to do well so as I've mentioned the second part of the test will be a video interview so what would you recommend is just dress as you would for a normal interview believe in yourself and um, so keep notes far away as possible so you're not tempted to read them when answering because then it can come across very very scripted um, and just making sure you keep an eye on time as well as well as that I'd also encourage you 
you know, we're very, very fortunate in this day and age where we've got mobile phones with cameras um, is maybe just practicing yourself, recording yourself answering a question and maybe marking how you come across so you can see how you're displaying yourself verbally, um, whether you're getting your point across or whether you're able to answer the questions as well and take it from there. And then lastly, um, we are still running our assessment centres virtually. Um, so this will be kind of, this will, the day will typically run from 9am till 2.30. Um, and the idea is, is that we want you to see it as a two-way process. So you want to understand more about BDO and we also want to understand more about you. So I always say to candidates, just treat the assessment centre like you've already got the job and it's just a really weird start to your working day. Um, so there'll be a number of different activities that you'll partake in and the idea is of the activities is just to give you a bit of a flavour with what life would be like as a trainee. Um, so you will start with a group exercise. Um, the group exercise is looking at how well you collaborate and work as a team. Um, and also just take into account how you have a discussion to come to the end of the brief that we've set you. The interview, so this will be one-on-one, -on -one, um, and the idea of the interview is that we want to understand a little bit more about your motivations um, for why you've applied to that particular role and why you want to come and work for BDM. And we'll also be looking at asking you a number of competency and strength-based questions. Um, you'll then have a written exercise, um, so this will be looking to assess your written communication skills. Um, and then lastly, you will then be um, assessed on a presentation. So you'll have time to prepare for a presentation, um, and then you would then go on to um, have a one-on-one -on -one with your assessor. And the idea of the presentation is that we will be asking you to do a SWOT analysis. So looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and then as well as that, you'll also get an opportunity to meet with the business area that you've applied to so this will be non-assessed um, and a great chance for you to kind of ask any questions that you may have just to help you understand whether this is going to be the right place for you so not a long day at all um, but we have had really positive feedback from candidates saying that they've really enjoyed the assessment center and been able to obtain a lot more about what life would be like here at BDA so I'll kind of best hints and tips on this is just making sure and again this can be applicable not only to the BDO assessment centre but any other assessment centres you might have coming up it's just making sure you do your research on the role as well as BDO um, so you know yes look on our careers website but also look at what's being said about BDO on the news or kind of what's drawn you to want to come and work for work for us work together as a group Dress as you would for a face-to-face -face interview so you can really get into that zone. Um, ensure presentation covers all the objectives. So I appreciate there is going to be a bit of a time pressure to that, but just making sure that you've understood what the brief is asking you um, and making sure that you factor a bit of time to just make sure you've got your structure and stuff together. Making sure spelling and grammar is correct when doing your written exercise um, and when presenting. And most importantly, be yourself. We want to make sure that we are we're getting the best from you. Um, we're not trying to catch you up with the assessment centre. We just want to understand how well um, you know you would adapt for life as a trainee. And I'm sure you'll also want to understand you know kind of how you can be yourself at BDO as well. So that was just a bit of a whistle stop tool, um, but feel free to follow us on our social media channels. So our social media channels will have a number of different hints and tips and you'll be able to hear a little bit more from our employees. Um, we also do have our careers website. So on our careers website, we have a talk to section. Um, so within that, you've got kind of trainees, you've got resource and advisors, so you've got a range of BDO employees on there. So if there's any particular questions you've got around the stream, any questions at all, then through, you know, feel free to drop us a message through our talk function. And we also have our events page on our website as well. Um, so as it is coming to a bit of a standstill with Christmas coming up, we will have more events and stuff taking place in the new year as well. So I'll hand it back over to Jackie. Thank you very much, Vicky. Okay, so I'm going to go through the questions we've got here. Um, please jump in, whoever feels like they can answer it. If no one jumps in, I will just pick on one of you. Um, so start with a slightly controversial one. Um, we've got a question. Would, would not the big four be the better step for me when I'm first applying for accounting job as a fresh graduate um, due to maybe better training options? So I'm happy to take that particular question. So I think at the end of the day, you know, it's for you to decide where the right starting platform is with your career. Um, and I think as graduates, you know, it's up to you to seize the opportunities that come your way. So even if you did decide to go to the big four, I think 
what will really stand out is the experiences you take, um, you know, with the opportunity that you have with that particular employment. Um, you know, or as well as the big four, we also do offer professional qualifications um, alongside of um, alongside of completing our trainee program with us as well. Um, so I think for me that you know that's a big that's a big gravitas for graduates because it's it shows that we are really really invested and committed in that. Um, but not only that, you know, we do have a number of you know we have our people development team. Um, you'll be working very very closely with our EIC induction team. So you know. The development won't just stop as being a graduate it will continue throughout your time um so i think for me it's you know at the end of the day if it's big four you want to go to that's totally fine but i think it's really understanding the opportunities that you want to gain from that experience and kind of what you make of it as well i don't know if anybody wanted to expand on that i think i think i would just add to say that actually um especially from a tax perspective um you get exactly the same qualification in that you'd um, typically go on to study cta um, what I would say is um, at BDO, from being a graduate, you get exposure to very senior colleagues straight away. Um, so actually, in terms of your on the job learning, I'd say you probably learn more um, in those early years than possibly you would do elsewhere. Great, thank you. Um, how is the graduate scheme designed in terms of balancing working and studying for your professional qualification? Yep. So um, with that, um, as I've mentioned, you know, you will be working quite closely with. So we've got a professional qualifications team um, in house here at BDO. So they'll be working very closely with you, making sure that you've booked onto your exams, that you've got enough time to do that. As well as that, we'll also be offering you study leave. Um, so a lot of our trainees have said that the study leave is very generous. Um, and as well as that, you know, our colleagues are very, very supportive. They've all been through the exact same journey. So it's just making sure that, you know, when you do come to join BDO, you'll be assigned with a people pa people manager. So that will be the person that you work very closely with, that you'll have, you know, ongoing one-to-ones with um, and making them aware of your workload and also just making them aware of when you've got exams and stuff coming up so they can ensure that, you know, you're, you're not getting bogged down um, with work and that you are able to log off on time to make sure that you revise for that. But... I'm pretty sure our panelists have got quite a lot of trainees um, on their team as well that are also facing that balance as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I would just add that, <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're new to thinking about this career, all this studying doesn't happen necessarily all in your own time. I mean, the 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 contract, the training contract that you go through has big blocks of time where all of our students go off to college and they 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 do all of their tuition and their teaching. And actually going back to the other point around the differences with the big four all, all of the big firms use the same training colleges basically and um, so you'll, you'll be in a classroom surrounded by people from all different firms learning the same content in the same room um but you will you are given big blocks of time to go off to college i mean people do tend to do a bit of work outside of the the college blocks um but it's not pure study that you have to do in evenings and weekends which uh, other qualifications if you're not doing them within an accounting firm I think that can be a bit more challenging trying to fit it around the day job but you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of students who go through every year so we we've got a pretty well worn path of trying to support them to balance their study and learning on clients at the same time or well, not at the same time they do one and then another and then but over the course of your contract you get to build them both up and kind of related to the, the working and studying and work-life balance question, and I hope this isn't too personal, but we've had a question of, have any of you ever experienced um, burnout or come close to it? And if so, how did you overcome it? I can maybe touch on this a little bit. As a, someone who's just recently finished my training contract, I qualified at the end of last year. I worked at a big full firm and I did find the hours were we're quite a lot. Not that we don't work long hours of video during during deadline times. Everything requires those sorts of hours, you know, when, when the time is right. But I did and I have experienced burnout two to three times mm -hmm. during my article time. And that excludes my year at video. I have not had I have had times when I've felt exhausted and I've spoken to the relevant people and they have advised me in a way and I've been able to manage that whereas in the past I wasn't so I definitely think that the support here in terms of mental well-being and preventing getting to that point is incredible 
And I think um, that, that's really good to hear that from you, Shane, because um, that, that's something as partners that is really important to us to make sure we have that support. And we've seen that um, a lot, for example, during COVID. So um, when people were working from home, we were very, very aware that people have very different home environments and how it is. And certainly um, everybody actually, irrespective of their grade, finds it much harder to switch off and say, right, that's enough for today. Um, so certainly um, as a firm, we've been very conscious of this. And just to give you some sort of tangible examples of how we've tried to help people with this. So um, in my team, we have something called Fun Fridays during lockdown. And it was basically half an hour, 9.30 on a Friday morning. And um, if you had time, and most people did, you signed up for it. And you'd be allocated into a sort of random group within the team of four or five people. And um, we, we'd just set a quiz or, or a mind puzzle or something. And the idea was just end of the week, we're all tired, we've always had a long week, let's start Friday with something to wind down. So that's quite a nice example of something we tried to do to say to people, you know, yes, we're all committed to our jobs. Yes, yes we work hard. Um, but we know we need that mental relaxation as well. And just perhaps one other example is um, actually something that I think BDO is really very good at is, um, you know, I, for example, um, am the people partner for a number of more senior people, but also for a number of more junior people. And during lockdown, I increased the number of times that I caught up with them. So I'd be catching up with them weekly if they actually said, no, it's really helpful for me to talk to somebody. And just to try and keep that communication going. So, you know, how are you finding things? Have you got too much? Um, have you got too little? Do you need some help finding something more interesting? Just to try and keep that dialogue open, because um, that to me is the first thing about burnout, is if people communicate and ask for help, it gives us the chance to do something. We really want to encourage them to ask if they need it. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, we had a question actually about um, how has work changed during COVID and if it's if it's affected job satisfaction. And I guess that's a particular concern for, for a new graduate wants to make friends in their in their work environments. Yeah, no, I would say on that, um, I mean, it has been difficult. I mean, I, I rejoined BDO during COVID uh, mm. and having to build up relationships you know, through these sorts of calls, is, it's not the same and it is it is challenging. And it's one of the things I've enjoyed over the last month or two as things started to open up until yesterday, at least. <laughs> yeah. People were getting back into the office um, and we've been trying to do a lot more social things because we've had so many people joined, you know, people need to get together and know each other. Um, in my teams, we were all out bowling last night. Um, and so there's, we're having to make a lot more effort now to, to reconnect with people than, than uh, has been possible over the last year. Um, because we're really keen to get that back. I think that's one of the key reasons why people join uh, graduate schemes in accounting firms is you are part of, uh, of a cohort of hundreds of new people who are all in the same boat, the same age as you, they're bright and motivated. They might be moving to the big city for the first time. There's a real sense of community and camaraderie and you, you know, you'll make friends that will stay with you for um, you know, decades. So it's really important to get people back out as much as possible out to clients out into the office so they can meet people um and because that side of things is a really important part of the job um okay another question thank you david uh do you have any tips for students who want to pursue a career at bdo but they don't have exposure in tax or i presume in any other specific areas of accountancy did all of you have experience in it or did you just you know go ahead then <laughs> no, and, and actually, when I think back to um, when I first started my um, tax career, I don't even think I knew what a personal allowance was, which um, many people, if they've not even had a, a payroll job yet, might not know that. So um, uh, I think anybody coming in, and, and we've spoken already about the um, training qualifications that you get, and typically you go out to college within the first few months of joining um, a professional services firm. So um, yeah, you're not expected to know anything actually. So even people with accounting and finance um, degrees potentially are treated in exactly the same way. Um, and it's very much just, you know, learn on the job as you go. Yeah, and Sinead, you know, Sinead, I think we'll find it a bit bizarre coming to the UK because in South Africa, you've done three or four years of accounting study before you join an accounting firm. Whereas here, Laura did geography, I did chemistry, people who did you know, <laughs> classical Greek. So they turn up on day one and they know absolutely zero. Um, some people who've done an accounting degree, they will have a head start for the first year. But by the end of the three year qualification, everybody's sort of caught up. 
Um, and so it doesn't matter what your background is. And we, we actually quite welcome having people from a, a diverse range of, of backgrounds. You know, if you've done a history degree and you're particularly good at writing, that's a really important skill. Um, so it's good for us to have a blend of different people with different skills and backgrounds. And kind of related to that is uh, there's a question here about the graduate programmes and how flexible you can be to choose or priori prioritise industries within the programme that you feel you do have a, a stronger experience with. So should I cover that from an audit perspective? Because I think if you join the, the audit stream, um, it might be worth mentioning, we, we do have sector groups within audit that specialise in media or leisure and hospitality or financial services or mining. But we, uh, we're we aware that I think for most students when they start out, they don't know what they want to do. So for the first two years, um, you go into a, a general pool of people who work across all of those sectors. So the idea being that you get exposure to a wide range of different businesses. And then at the end of the, the first two years of your training contract, people choose a sector group that they particularly enjoyed or want to spend more time in. So in the third year, their training contract, you know, we will have people in my world coming into consumer markets or leisure and some will choose to go into mining. And uh, so for the first two years, you get a broader, more general exposure to different clients. And then after that, you, you have a choice of um, specializing into a sector. In order. Shall I answer it? Shall yeah. I answer that from a tax perspective? Yes, please. Um, so um, within tax, it's um, less structured than that. So um, Laura and I work in two different tax teams, but um, Laura is more focused on people. I'm more focused on or employees. I'd say I'm more focused on businesses. Um, within each of our teams, um, we will have people who are industry specialists. So I am the tax leader for the natural resource um, specialism. Um, that doesn't mean I exclusively do natural resources, but it does mean that I do an awful lot of it. Um, and then what we do, people can actually almost choose. So quite often I'll be talking to a new joiner who says, oh yeah, no, I'm really interested in mining or I'm really interested in oil and gas. Perhaps you could get some experience for me. So then I'll be able to look out for them and say, oh, I've got a project coming in. Why don't you get involved in it? And we can make that more or less structured depending what people want. So, um, you know, as people get a bit of a clearer idea of what industries like they like, they tend to get a bit more specialist as they get more senior. So um, perhaps by the time you're a senior manager, um, you might be a standing member of my natural resource specialist team, which means we get together once a month. We talk about what's going on in the industry and what the um, what some of the tax issues might be. So, um, you know, industry specialism is definitely an option, um, but it's not structured. So you have great flexibility. And in the early years, I think that's great. You know, we've got people in our team who are experts in betting and gaming, in retail and leisure. And certain so more junior grade people can try and then say, no, actually, I find that really interesting. I'd like to get a bit more involved in that sector specialism. Do you think that covers it fairly, Laura? It's probably fairly similar in your team. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'd say for the majority of my career, I've been pretty industry agnostic because um, the area of tax that I work in um, and moving people, it doesn't really matter which uh, industry you fall within. Um, but interestingly, um, and one of the great things about BDO is that I've just been asked to um, lead our TMT offering for um, the Leeds region. Um, and this has been driven by the fact that I've got a bit of a digital innovation background as well. So I do understand um, some of the highs and lows of working in digital innovation. And just goes to show that any point of time in your career, there's always opportunities for specialising in, in different things. The other thing I was going to add is um, whether that specialization might be the different parts of BDO. So you can join as a graduate straight into tax or straight into corporate finance or straight into business restructuring. Um, or you can join and a lot of people do join into audit or tax. And then after they've got their qualification, they may decide that they want to move into corporate finance or to business restructuring. So a lot of people within corporate finance in BDO started out in audit. It's a fairly well trodden path. Um, so again, you do have the opportunity to start in audit or tax and then move into another function. Or if you're very clear in your own mind that you want to do corporate finance, you can go straight there as a graduate. But I would say probably more people would go through audit, get the more general business qualification and then start to specialise in corporate finance or restructuring or whatever it is at a later point in their career. 
I, I think that's really true. And that's one of the, the, um, the one of the bits of advice I give to our, our new joiners. I say, you know, use your opportunities at this BDO. There are so many different things you can do here. Ask as many questions, um, you know, make as many contacts as you can, ask other people what they're doing. It's such a great opportunity to learn about so many different business specialisms, industry specialisms, accountancy specialisms. And actually what we do within our team when our um, when our graduates get to the point um, where they've qualified, we almost have a bit of a careers fair when we get people from different parts of the firm to come and talk to them and people who've worked inside the firm and outside the firm, just to say, you know, you've now got your qualification, you've had three years in business, you know, really think about how the rest of you want the rest of your path to work and how it is that we can help you. And these are some of the routes other people have taken that might interest you. That's nice to know so that you don't, you don't pigeonhole yourself in the beginning. You can always go in different directions, but if you do know a specific direction, you can also stay on that road. Yeah. Okay. So a big question here in terms of benefits, salary and or work-life balance, what do you think makes BDO stand out? I would say all of the above <laughs> from my experience, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think that there's um, potentially a bit of a, um, I don't know, an idea out there that, um, you know, the big four pay the biggest salaries and that's why people would be headed there if that's what drives them. But um, certainly from my own personal experience, that isn't the case. BDO is incredibly competitive. Um, and I think, you know, all professional services firms talk about ensuring that um, their employees have a good work-life balance. Um, but I generally feel like um, at BDO, it, it's said and it is meant. Um, and so there's always a lot of questions asked, you know, how are things going? Have you got too much on? I know when I speak with my team, I'm always checking in with them to say, how's your um, pipeline of work? Do you feel like it's manageable? Um, you know, everybody in any sort of professional industry works overtime when it's needed to get things done, to meet deadlines, but it's not something that we would ever here want to be the norm and the day-to-day. -day. The other thing Thank I would you. add, I think, is around the flexibility and autonomy, because I've always mm -hmm. been surprised when you know, university or school friends of mine have gone into, say, banking, that their time is much more rigorously controlled. You know, we, we trust our people to, to work how they want to, when they want to, a bit more, I think. so. If you need to take a Friday afternoon off and you want to work a bit longer on a Tuesday to do that, we're, we're fine with that. And, and same in terms of remote working. You know, we're, we're trying to allow people the flexibility to work where they want to, when they want to, you know, so it works best for them and for the client. Um, and I think that autonomy is a bit of a differentiator. And I really enjoyed it in my career, having that flexibility to um, you know, plan my own time and you know, decide what I want to do when. And I think, you know, Sinead knows if she was working on a job for me, I'm not going to be phoning up and demanding that I know where she is every minute of the day. You, you know, you trust people to get on and, and use their own initiative and responsibility. And that's not and the case, I think, in, in every corporate type career. BDO um, encourage you taking your leave, which was something quite new for me this year when I was encouraged to take leave before June. I don't usually take leave during the year and I've definitely been taking more leave scattered around the year you get more rest they really do encourage that they encourage at half past five if you need to leave go to go play a sport go to the gym even just log off and rest for an hour that's fine they do encourage that even in the busiest of times they'll encourage you keep that balance of going to gym and taking that time to spend with your families or your friends and things like that so definitely definitely a plus a video and I'd probably add, I mean, I think we're very proud we're different. Um, we, we want to be different. Um, and for me, it's the culture that really stands out. And we, we've touched on them both today, but um, this real focus on helping others succeed, that's our clients and our people. So we're an incredibly people-focused organisation, and that really shows. And the other one in, is in the area of valuing difference. So um, we want as many voices as we can possibly have in the organisation. Um, you know, we, we really encourage people to challenge, ask questions, get involved. Um, it's those challenging questions that will lead to really, really good answers for our, our clients. So um, that's something we absolutely want. And um, yeah, for me, that culture really differentiates us. Thank you. And, and thank you, all of you. We've come to the end of our time. That went 
so quickly. I hope that everyone who's, who's listening on the call has sort of really learned about some really great reasons to, to join BDO. Um, Vicky, I'm sure they can get in touch if they have any further questions, yes? And yeah, so that's correct, they can do. Great, so it just remains for me to say thank you so much, Julia, Vicky, David, Sinead and Laura. And um, bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jackie.